Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and this is your dream podcast. And let me tell you why. You will learn something you wish you would have known a long, long time ago about your calculator. And this is why we have these great technologies called calculators, and you don't live in places like Indiana or Calculator Free Texas. Um, and you will love it. So we're going to learn how to solve equilibrium expressions using our wonderful calculator. So get out your calculator. We're also going to be using, for example, the multiple choice questions I gave you. So get out your multiple choice questions. Um, so we're going to learn how K reflects balancing. We're going to look at multiple steps, K1, K2, K3. Um, Q compared to K. Q is a quotient, and if you remember, K is a quotient too. And look how those things. We'll learn that equilibrium can never be stopped. It's so bad, you can't stop me. And examples of Q at K in which we will shift. This one, I sorry it's still on there. I don't think we do that. Not yet. But we'll get there. All right, so let's hop into it. So if I wanted to solve for this equation right here, it would drive you nuts, okay? You go, oh, I think I have to foil this first outside, inside, left, collect terms, maybe graph it and look for intercepts or solve, uh, but you look at it and you groan. Maybe you can do it. You should be able to do it, um, but it should bother you. I'm going to show you how to do it with the joy of your calculator. So get out your wonderful calculator. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. You need to have a real calculator. So, Joe, you're going to have to stop and get your calculator now. Um, so the calculator to solve. You're going to hit the math button. Um, I have a TI-84+, plus, but even TI-83s have this. My math button is below my alpha button. And I'm going to hit math, and to go to zero, I will scroll down to 10 or zero. And if I hit zero, um, yours, well, mine says something. Yours probably says nothing. It probably just says EQN colon zero equals. It probably only has um, this part on here. Okay, which is fine. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to type in this equation in the zero equals form. Well, if you're doing the zero equals form, all you're going to do is take this and throw it over to the other side. So it's going to be minus this. So if you look, you've got x squared, x squared, divided by 2 minus x squared, divided by 2 minus x squared, minus 1.5e negative 5. Okay, so that's all you're going to do. So you're going to type that into my equation. So parentheses. I'm, maybe I over parentheses a little bit. But my x button is what's right next to my alpha button. So x squared divided by parentheses again, 2 minus x parentheses squared parentheses minus 1.5 second e negative 5. And then if I hit enter, it says x equals, okay? Now, it says x equals 0. You're going to change that to your guess, which will be smaller than your initial. By the way, this number right here is going to be your initial. But your initial, what I always use for my initial, is point zero 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 one. Okay? So it picks up really small. Point zero 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 one. Okay? And then, to make it solve for this, I'm going to hit alpha, which is that green button below second, Enter. And if you look on my calculator, alpha enter, the enter button says solve above it. And it's changed my answer to 0.00772. Well, wait a minute. What's that? Oh, that's the answer. It has just solved what x is. x equals 0.00772. And you can plug that in and see that that's right. Isn't that cool? Now let me show you how it works for chemistry. This is problem 8 and your multiple choice. At 500 degrees Kelvin... Um, one mole of gaseous uncle is placed in a one liter container. At equilibrium, 8.2% dissociated according to the equation shown here. Determine the equilibrium constant. So we're going to learn how to do ice diagrams here. So my first thing I'm going to do is write my equation. Two onkels uh, yield two nose plus Cl2. And then what an ice diagram is, I didn't leave myself enough space. Um, I stands for initial, that means the starting amount. C stands for change. And E stands for equilibrium. Um, determine the equilibrium constant. Now, one mole of gaseous onkel is placed in a one liter container. All of these things must be done in molarity. 
And there's one exception to that. We can do it in pressures, too, but it's got to be done in molarity. So if I have one mole and one liter, that's easy. That's one molar. And that's all I have. I have zero, zero. At equilibrium, it is 8.2% dissociated according to the equation shown here. Now, the change is going to be minus, I'm going to call it minus x. Oops, sorry, minus 2x. The reason why I'm going to call it minus 2x is because, oops, it didn't change the highlighter for me. This has a coefficient of 2, okay? So minus 2x, then this is going to be, my 2NO would be plus 2x, and this is going to be plus x. Now, at equilibrium, I have 1 minus 2x. I have 2x, and I'll have x. Now, up here it says at equilibrium, 8.2% is dissociated. So if 8.2% dissociated, that means that um, at equilibrium, 1 minus 2x equals, you know, 8.2% dissociated, so 91.8% is left, right? So 91.8% of 1 molar, right, would be 0.91. Okay, does that make sense? I hope. Um, and then the amount that it lost would be 8.2%. So let me first of all just do 100 minus 8.2 to make sure I didn't do some dumb math thing. Good, it is 91.8. Um, and then I'm going to solve for x. Okay, so 0 0.1 minus or 0.91 minus 1 is a negative 0 0.09 divided by negative 2. That's 0.045. So at equilibrium, I'm going to put this equilibrium thing here again, 1 minus 2x would be 1 minus quantity 2 times 0 .0, oops, 0 0.045, which is 0.91. Didn't I already do that? I think I did. And then 2 times x, 2 times 0 0.045, which I know also is point, um, oh, no, it's not, is 0 0.09. And then at equilibrium, this one would be x, which is 0 0.045. So again, this is my x, and then I just plugged in, that's 2x, that's x, and I just put it in there, okay? Determine the equilibrium constant. So my equilibrium constant, I'm changing functions here, so I'll change colors, keq equals products to the coefficient, well, I'm not going to write that, it equals NO squared times CL2 to the first over Ankel squared. By the way, if they don't give you the states of matter, you can assume that they're going to be gases and that they're going to work, unless they say otherwise. So my KEQ here is going to be um, 0 0.09 squared times 0 0.045 all over uh, 0.91 squared. Hopefully you could hear what I said, because I know this isn't very legible, 0.91 squared. So in my calculator, 0 0.09 squared times 0 0.045 divided by 0 0.91 squared, hey, I could read my writing, is KEQ is, I'll write it up here in red, 4.40 E negative 4 equals K. And I know we had some unit issues before. We tend to not put units on K, although it has some units sometimes, other times it doesn't. But that's the equilibrium expression, and that's number 8. IC diagram number 16 with pressures. Now, if we use pressures, um, remember I said Ks are pretty much all the same? Um, a K with pressure is called KP. And this would mean the pressure of my products raise the coefficients over pressure of reactants raised to my coefficients. Now, you may not be able to read this. Sometimes it's hard to read. But um, number 16 is what we're on right here. I still have number 16 with pressures. So I have 41.6 gram sample of calcium carbonate. is put into a 10 liter container and heated to 800. What percent of calcium carbonate will react to reach equilibrium? So what I'm going to have to do first is, um, because it gives me Kp, I can change that into a pressure. So PV equals nRT is the first thing I'm doing. Now, notice my K expression, I'm writing my K expression first, Kp equals um, pressure of CO2, come on, O2, 
raised to nothing over, oh my goodness, nothing else is in it. So as soon as I find the pressure of CO2, that's my equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. Okay? So what percent of the calcium carbonate will react to reach equilibrium. So if this is 1.16, what that means is the pressure at equilibrium is 1.16 um, atmospheres. Okay. So if my pressure is 1.16 atmospheres, I'm going to PV equals nRT it. My pressure is 1.16. My volume is 10. comes from here. Moles is what I'm looking for. R is, now I'm doing atmospheres, and I'm doing, um, yeah, I'm doing atmospheres and a lot of other stuff. So my atmosphere, R is 0.0821. And my temperature is 800. Celsius, oh, tricky, 800 plus 273. 1,073. So N equals 1, oops, clear, 1.16 times 10 divided by 0 0.0821, divided by 1073, and I have 0.132 moles. So that's how many moles had to have turned into a gas. So if I have 46% of calcium carbonate will react to reach equilibrium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this. This is how much I have, so that many moles reacted. So I'll just convert that into grams. 0.132 moles of calcium carbonate times dividing bar, one mole calcium carbonate, and then grams of calcium carbonate. Oh, it's been a while. Little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the periodic table. So calcium is 40.06 plus 12.01 plus 48 is 100.07. So 132 times 100.07 is a big number. 132, that's not right. Oh, that's because 0.132 times 100.07 would give me 13.2 grams. So 13.2 grams used over 46.1 grams total. Where did that number come from? Ah, what percent will react? So times a hundo. 13, oops, I guess I don't need to do that. I can do second answer divided by 46.1, and I have 28.6%. Yay, isn't that wonderful? Okay. I'll do one more before we stop, just because it's horribly long. This has been a horribly long thing. And then I have Ice Evil number 22 is what it says. So we're going to do number 22, I hope, except it's not changing for me. I'm thinking that's my omen to stop. Oop. Oh, yeah. Ah, There we go. No, oh, maybe I'll go one more. Okay, so consider the reaction 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas is an equilibrium with 2SO3 at a constant temperature. Initially, containers filled with pure SO3 a pressure of two atmospheres, after which equilibrium is laid. So I have two pressure atmospheres. If Y is the partial pressure of O2 at equilibrium, oh. Okay, so I'm going to start with my ice diagram. 2SO2 plus O2 yields uh, 2SO3. And it tells me I have two pressures. Now, the nice thing about pressures is you can do things in pressure, especially if they give you a KP. So that means I can treat pressures just like moles or molarities. So here's my ice diagram. Do, 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 do. I should have played ice, ice, baby. So I have two atmospheres of SO3 to start with. Now, isn't it odd that they started with the products? That's okay, though. Two atmospheres. Zero, zero. So the change... If Y is the partial pressure of O2 at equilibrium, uh, I'll get there in a minute. So, two, so this is going to be minus 2X because that's my coefficient. This would be plus X. This would be plus 2X. So at equilibrium, I would have 2X. I would have X. And I would have 2 minus 2X. Okay. Now it says Y is the partial pressure of O2 at equilibrium. Okay. So way to be annoying. I have to change all my x's to y's, right? Whee! Why couldn't they have it be x? Whee! 
So as you can tell, I like to start with an ice diagram and then adjust it. So, um, yeah, I will stop. So now, um, KP. So I need to write my KP expression. So KP is SO3 squared over SO2 squared times O2. So SO3 squared would be 2 minus 2y squared, and that came from right here, over SO2 squared, which would be 2y squared. So 4y squared, oh, they didn't do that. So 2y squared times y. Don't you hate the variable things? So I know I do. Oh, let's keep going. Um, last one, number 27. Initially, two moles of N2 and four moles of H2 are added to a one liter container, and the following reaction occurred. So because it's one liter, that means molarity equals moles, which is nice. Um, if the equilibrium concentration is that, the value for K is 700 for the information. Okay, so I'm going to write my ice diagram. I love those. So initially I have two N2s, and I have four H2s. Ice, ice, baby. Do, 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 do. So I've got nothing there. Um, at equilibrium, the concentration of NH3 is 0.74 moles per liter. So I'm going to be um, a little more pro. Well, no, I'm not. Um, the change is going to be using my coefficients minus 3x minus x plus 2x. At equilibrium, I'll have 4 minus 3x. I'll have 2 minus x. And I'll have 2x. Now, it tells me wonderfully that 0.74 moles is NH3. So 2x equals 0.74. So x equals 0.37. So that means I get to fix this. So clear. For NH3, uh, it told me it's 0.74. And N2 would be 2 minus 0.37, because that was x, right? which would be 1.63. And 4 minus quantity 3 times 0.37 quantity is 2.89. So if I were to do this um, to find k, I now have k equals, oh, I'm going to run out of space again, NH3 squared over H2 cubed n2 to the first. And to plug those in, um, nh3 is 0.74 squared. h2 is 2.89 cubed. And n2 is 1.63. So 0.74 squared divided by 2. 8, 9 raised to the third divided by 1.63 and I have 0 0.013 as my answer which would be B. Okay, So those are the only things that are hard to go through here. Um, K1 times K2 times K3 equals K total. The steps of a reaction of individual K's, that would be KEQ's. Right? The total K is the product of these, so you just need to multiply those. Number 14 we'll have to do in class because I didn't put it on there, and we're already pushing a long time. Q means we're not at equilibrium, but you're going to get there. Remember, equilibrium is an unstoppable process, so you have to keep, um, whenever you're not at equilibrium, you go there. If Q is 10.3 and K is 9.1, so Q is a ratio of products over reactants raised to the coefficients. Huh. That looks just like K, right? So it looks just like K, and it is just like K. K is the ratio of products over reactants at equilibrium. Q is the ratio of products over reactants at some point in time, OK? So right now, looking at this, this first bullet, Q is too big. If Q is too big, 
That means I want to make it smaller so my products will turn into my reactants. So the reaction shifts towards the reactant. Which way does it shift? Toward eh, reactants to lower Q. What would Q need to be to shift towards the reactants? Just bigger than 9.01. What if Q equals K? You are in the golden land of at equilibrium. KP and KC are related. Whoops, I said those weren't there. We'll do 11 and 15 in class. This is the equation KP equals KC times RT raised to the delta N. Um, I will have to figure out which R that is, which is quite important. I believe it's, in, I don't know. I've checked to make sure. It's, I think it's the uh, leader one. We'll see. Review. Just do all these problems and you do it in your sleep. We do a lot of these. We did not use the calculator one yet, but you will see it. You're going to want to use that. This is the podcast you're going to go back to again and again. Sorry it was so long, but you know that's what you get. And at least you get a picture of Homer in his underwear. <laughs>